Gen 5 in Pokemon Go. We don't have a release date yet. We don't have Game Master information, but we do have teasers in the official artwork suggesting that Gen 5 is on Niantic's minds. On top of that, we've had generation releases every nine months, and, well, Gen 5 is a little bit past its due. So, Gen 5, when's it coming? Hopefully soon. So the question is, which Pokemon in Gen 5 are going to be good? Well, fortunately for you, I made an article going over this exact topic. So the top 10 Pokemon for rating in Generation 5. Now if you're curious, Pokemon Go uses a stat translation from the main series games, so we actually do know the stats of all the Gen 5 Pokemon, and Pokemon Go also pulls the moves from their official, like, coded move sets into Pokemon Go, so we have an idea of what moves they could learn which means that I'm not completely talking out of my butt here. That said, they might not get all the exact right movesets, and if they don't, well, then they're probably going to flop. But let's get into the analysis. If you want to reference any information from this video, well, link in the description to the article if you want to reference the article instead of clips from a YouTube video. This is the TLDR. So starting out, number 10, we have Meloetta, Purette Form. It has two forms, Aria Form, Purette Form, the Purette form has better stats, so we're going with that one for the number 10 slot. Uh, base HP, 225. Base attack, 269. And base defense, 188. The max CP of 3915. So first thing that should stand out about this Pokemon is that that is dangerously close to that 4000 CP cutoff. At 4000 max CP, Niantic likes to give a 9% nerf to all those Pokemon. Along with both of these Pokemon being very powerful, they're both normal type Pokemon. Pirate form is normal fighting, Arya is normal psychic, but they're both normal. And as a result, you can see on this table right here that they will have the best normal type DPS in the game. Actually rewriting the book on what normal type damage is in Pokemon Go. So yeah, we got Quick Attack with Last Resort. Now, if Last Resort is too exclusive, Niantic doesn't like handing it out to everybody. Just a reminder, they did give Smackdown, which was Tyranitar's move, to a whole bunch of different Pokemon. So, you know, Last Resort can show up in other places, like on my girlfriend's cat. So it is possible to be sprinkled on to other Pokemon. Even if it doesn't get Last Resort, Hyper Beam is still enough to put it even further beyond what we currently recognize as being a powerful normal-type Pokemon. Now... Both these Meloettas are mythic Pokemon, so what, it's going to be 2024 by the time we finally get them. We do have Bravery, Unpheasant, and Sincinko Sin 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 to look forward to as top normal type DPS. And if they should fail us, I believe Saucebuck, which is another Gen 5 normal type Pokemon, uh, comes after Sincino, and then or Sincino, and then, uh, and then after that I think is uh, finally... One of our boys that we currently have, Ambipom. Ambipom's like rocking like a 12.7 or 12.9 DPS on this chart. So, yeah. So, as you can tell, 14, 15, 16, 17 DPS, definitely a step up. Now, is this enough of a step up to make normal types like a more viable rating threat? That's hard to say right now, but I am interested to see what comes from them in the future, especially on partly cloudy days. So, keep your eyes out. Not just for Meloetta, but for these other normal type Pokemon. Next up, number 9. We have a fan favorite, Reshiram, Fire Dragon Pokemon. And it's not in the number 9 slot because it's good at being a dragon type. It's here because of its fire type swag. Yeah, so Reshiram with Fire Fang and Overheat has the ability to slightly outpace Blaziken as a fire type attacker. Furthermore, it is much more tanky and has a bit more relevant resistances than Blaziken, making it all around a generally better fire-type Pokemon than our boy Blaziken here. Now, you might be sitting at home thinking, Ryan Swag, isn't Fire Spin better than Fire Fang? Well, it is. And unfortunately for both Reshiram and Darmanitan, uh, they don't learn Fire Spin. They learn Fire Fang. So <laughs> that kind of uh, limits their options a little bit there. So if Reshiram does get shafted, and does not get a fire type fast move, well then its ability to outpace Blaziken uh, is a little bit nerfed. Now an interesting thing to note about all these fire type Pokemon, if you recall from my Blaziken video, yeah, they're all really good against Registeel, have some really relevant resistances. So up against the Registeel raid, we're trying to show off Blaziken in this graph, but once you bring in the Gen 5 boys, Chandelure 
ghost fire type Pokemon, double resisting normal, double resisting fighting, resisting the steel type attacks, total tanky boss with really good damage in this fight. Uh, same with Volcarona. And then here you see Reshiram not doing so shabby itself. If it's in a situation where uh, Chandelure is not getting every single advantage, well then obviously it would outpace it. But in this specific fight, Chandelure is outpacing it. So these fire type Pokemon, they're not too bad themselves. And they both can learn Fire Spin, unlike Reshiram and Darmanitan, who I uh, left off of this graph. A uh, thing to note is that this was made before the Blaze Kick nerf. So right here it's saying like uh, Blaze Kick is better than Blast Burn, but it's not. So don't get confused by that. And then over here you can see we got M Boar, which is a starter Pokemon in Gen 5. And it's not too shabby either. Like this is with the Blast Burn moveset, as good as Blaziken. So definitely not a bad Pokemon, but definitely not a stellar standout Omega option like these three up here. And then Reshiram always has room to grow. It does have some signature moves, such as uh, Fusion Flare and Blue Flare. So if it were to receive either of those attacks at some point, then it could surge even further ahead than where it is right now. Uh, just letting you guys know that things are heating up for Fire-type Pokemon in Gen 5. Then next up, we got number 8, Conkeldur. Some people like to call it Conkeldur. I like to call it Conkeldur. Conkeldur, Conkeldur, comment below what your favorite pronunciation is. Um, but yeah, this guy, total boss, base HP, 233, base attack, 243, base defense, 158, max CP, 3337, right? And why is Conkeldur here? Well, it's a fighting type. There's only one reason why a fighting type would be on one of these, and that is if it could potentially outpace the champ, Machamp. Now, back when Gen 3 was a dream, we were thinking Breloom might be outpacing the Machamp because, you know, it's got the higher attack stat, and it got the right moveset too. But in practice, what we found was, was that because Machamp was much more tanky, it was able to survive long enough to get off more dynamic punches, which at the end of the day made it overall better than Breloom. Well, Conkeldur, should it get blessed with the counter dynamic punch moveset? It not only has the brawn, but it has the, the brawn to stand up to Machamp. Yeah, so the tankiness and the power, so watch out Machamp. Now, of course, if Conkeldur doesn't get dynamic punch or doesn't get counter, then it's going to be less than Machamp. So it's conditional, right? Um, but at the end of the day, Conkeldur does offer some hope for there to be some more variety in fighting type Pokemon. Now, if things don't work out for Conkeldur, we still have our Machamp army, so whatever. And then here we got a nice cameo of Meloetta, pure at form, with the double fighting type moveset. So also a pretty decent contender. If we were to be up against a uh, fighting weak Pokemon using ghost type attacks, uh, this could really be a big deal. So, you know, to 2024, whenever we get this mythic, right? Then next up, number seven, we have another fan favorite, the Zekrom, Dragon of Thunder, right? Being a total boss, same stats as Rushy Ram. So definitely not too shabby. And scrolling on down, the so Zekrom, as you can tell, beats out Raikou and Electivire for electric type DPS. And much more tanky and has the dragon type resistances. So Zekrom looking like a boss. Uh, thing to note though, here, Charge Beam. Charge Beam. Is this a joke? Am I handicapping Zekrom? No. The only electric type fast moves that Zekrom can learn are Volt Switch and Charge Beam, which heavily limits its power. Fortunately for it, it doesn't limit it too much because if it still has Wild Charge, because of its amazing stats, it still outpaces them as an electric type Pokemon. So... I mean, Electivire is already a really good budget option if you haven't overly invested in Raikou already. So, like, you know, all these Pokemon are great. So, keep your eyes peeled for the future. But, uh, no leaks. There is a Pokemon coming up ahead in this article that's going to blow Zekrom out of the water. So, so, keep your brain open to that possibility. Scroll on down. We have number six, the Volcarona. Now, am I talking about Volcarona as a fire type? We already established that it's, you know, slightly worse than Reshiram and Blaziken, but it's got relevant resistances. Why is Volcarona here? Well, Mothra here isn't just a fire type Pokemon. It is a fire bug 
type Pokemon, and why would it be on this top 10 list if it was not the next level of bug type Pokemon? So looking at Volcarona with both Bug Bite, Struggle Bug, Bug Buzz, and Signal Beam, all these movesets, Volcarona is able to outpace Pinsir and Caesar as the best bug type Pokemon in the game. Fury Cutter is also in league with this. I can't remember if it learns it or not. It does not learn Fury Cutter. All right, so those are the only two bug type fast moves. It's going to get one of them. And as far as bug type charge moves go, I believe X Scissor is also on this level, but I think it getting one of these is a bit more likely. At any rate, Volcarona is most likely going to be the best bug type Pokemon in Pokemon Go. And then for comparison, we also have Genesect here, which is a mythic, you know, Deoxys type mythic Pokemon uh, bug steel type like Caesar with Fury Cutter and Bug Buzz which is a moveset I actually don't really expect it to get it seems more of like the charge beams and headbutt variety of Pokemon to be honest but at any rate even with that moveset does not compare to the Volcarona okay slightly compares slightly compares to the Volcarona in power but if we get that Bug Bite Bug Buzz or the Bug Bite uh, signal beam well then this bug is going to be the bug yeah and uh, because of its power as both a bug type and a fire type pokemon and because of its uh you know swag in the main series games its legacy i could see this one being a 400 candy type pokemon we'll have to see don't quote me john hankey plug your ears 50 candy i'd like that a little bit better um but i would respect volcarona being a 400 candy evolution in gen 5. now if you're sitting at home thinking ryan Bug types, they're only useful for countering Psychics, and we already have Ghost and Dark type Pokemon doing that. Well, I made a comparison graph for specifically against Psychic type Pokemon. So you can see here, Giratina Origin Form still rule in the school. The unreleased Darkrai, which is a Gen 4 Mythic Pokemon, also really freaking good. Chandelure, showing its stuff as the best non-Mythic, non-Legendary overall uh, Ghost type Pokemon. Uh, slightly less DPS in the Gengar, but more tanky. We have our trade-offs, right? Uh, Mewtwo, and then we have Volcarona. So is it going to be the best Psychic-type counter 100% of the time? Maybe, maybe not. Um, but it could be a really formidable one, especially if you're up against the right moveset. You get the right resistances in, like Ice Beam, Focus Blast, Dynamic Punch. Those things are things that Volcarona can handle. And then when it comes to Ghost-type attacks coming in, it's neutral, it's not weak. And I know that the dark types, they resist it, but all of it relative. Then we got number five, which is Rampardos 2.0, the Archaeops, right? 292 base attack. Insanity, right? So with a double rock moveset, it will be slightly behind the Rampardos. So rock throw with rock slide. Now if you're curious, what if it gets Smackdown instead? Smackdown is slightly worse than rock throw, so it would be performing even less so than shown here. So on the level of Rampardos, not exactly beating Rampardos, right? So why is it in this video? Because it may become the Rampardos of flying type Pokemon. So if Archaeops were to receive both wing attack and sky attack, it would outpace Moltres by a freaking lot. That is 19.7 repeating DPS versus 16.9696 probably repeating like that DPS, right? So that's that's actually quite a bit. This is like the new level of flying type Pokemon. Now, will Archaeops get Sky Attack? I don't know. And if it doesn't get Sky Attack and it gets, let's say, Aerial Ace, then, eh, then it's going to be less than Moltres, right? So that kind of sucks. But this represents the potential of what Archaeops could be if it gets the right moveset. So don't get too hyped up. I think if you invest in one Flying-type Moltres, you're probably definitely safe. Maybe two if you're really into Flying-type Pokemon. Um, Archaeops could come in the future and totally steal the show. Uh, but it might not either. So more on that in the future. Uh, and then here we got Unpheasant, which was from our normal type graphic. Also doing pretty good, better than Rayquaza, not better than Moltres or Honchkrow, so okay. And then we've got uh, Tornadus, which is like the, you know, Zapdos, Articuno, Moltres of flying type specifically. And it is one of the few, actually I think at this point it is the only mono flying type Pokemon. And uh, despite being the mono flying type, who's all about being a flying type, 
definitely not as cool as the other flying types. It can't learn sky attack. It learns hurricane. It's kind of awkward. Also, another thing to note about Archaeops is in the main series games, it has an ability where if it's under half HP, then its attack stack gets cut in half. I don't know if they're going to have something like that in Pokemon Go or not. Um, I don't think they will, but anything's possible. They did give the Slack King Yawn, so it is possible for them to maybe nerf Archaeops in some way too. Uh, but all things considered, I don't think Archaeops really needs a nerf because it's already less than Rampardos with the most ideal moveset. And then Archaeops getting the two moves it needs to excel over Moltres, it can happen. It may happen. I mean, it happened for Rampardos. It got Rock Slide. I didn't think Niantic would actually do that, and they did. Um, so anything's possible. Then number four and number three, we have Excadrill and Landorus, Therian form. And Incarnate form can get roped in here too. So both of these are ground-type Pokemon, and they are compared on the same little graph boy here. Yeah, so both awesome Pokemon. Um, so starting out, we got Excadrill. And Excadrill, with either Drill Run or Earth Power, will beat out the Groudon as a ground-type Pokemon. However, everybody is thinking about that Garchomp Community Day. And a lot of people do want that Garchomp to get Earth Power. And if Garchomp does get Earth Power, well then Excadrill might be slightly old news. However, Landorus, Therian form, steals the show once again with Mudshot and Earth Power being the best ground type DPS. Now, luckily for you guys, when I did my Raikou content, I also did a ground type future Gen 5 graph. So you can visualize these Pokemon in combat. Yeah, so here is what we currently know. We got Groudon and Garchomp being awesome. Then over here, we got Rhyperior and Mamoswine being awesome. So these are the tanky boys. These are the power boys. Here is a Earth Power Fantasy Flygon. Not as good as the OG Garchomp we have right now. Sorry, man. And then over yonder, we have Earth Power Garchomp being awesome in both DPS and TDO. And then up here, we have Precipice Blades, Groudon, the signature move on the Pokemon. When are we going to get that? Nobody knows, but this looks pretty, pretty daunting. That's, that's pretty insane. I expect a nerf, <laughs> right? I expect a nerf. But yeah, no, so this one here, um, I don't know which one looks crazier, but the, the one with the less brown, right, the, the super mustache one, super mustache Landris, the Therian form with earth power, definitely superseding everything here in terms of DPS, and the basic form, the incarnate form, beating out everything with earth power. Should they not get earth power, if they get earthquake, they are condemned, um, then they will be slightly better than what we currently have and not like strictly overwhelmingly awesome. So will the uh, ground type legendary birds basically uh, get the best ground type moveset? Maybe, maybe not. We'll have to see what happens in the future. Now, small rant I wanna go on for the Excadrill here is it's freaking Excadrill, right? So I got it with Drill Run and Earth Power. I, it needs to get Drill Run. It needs to. Niantic has been messing with these Pokemon forever. Like look at Rhyperior. It has a drill on its nose. It is a drill on its face. It does not get drill run. Why? Right? So if Excadrill does not get drill run, I'll be quite annoyed by that. Um, so I expect this move set. But knowing Niantic, they always mess with me and drill run, specifically me. I know you're watching John Hankey, so I wouldn't be too surprised if it got drill run and earth power just to trivialize drill run. Like, okay, Ryan Swag, here's your drill run. You're never going to use it because we also gave it earth power. So how do you like them apples? I could see it happening. And John Hankey is taking notes right now. Make sure drill run and earth power. I hate Ryan Swag. That's, that's what he wrote down. Then moving on down, we got number two, Thunderous Therian form. Yeah, you thought Zekrom was hot? Zekrom ain't got nothing on Thunderous. Thunderous is going to do to Zekrom what freaking Landorus did to Groudon, which is beat it out in like almost every way imaginable. So yeah, Thunderous Therian form, even with the diminutive Charge Beam Thunderbolt moveset, not even Wild Charge, is beyond the level of Zekrom in damage per second. And any moveset upgrade it gets from there, be it Thundershock or Wild Charge, it just goes through the roof in power, redefining what we currently know as being a powerful electric type in Pokemon Go. 
So if it gets Thundershock while charged, that'd be pretty off the rails. 19.6 DPS compared to Raikou's 16.1 DPS. That's insane. That's like 3.5 more DPS, which is madness. So will Thunderous Therian form be that crazy? I don't know. We'll find out in the future. But if you're thinking about dumping tons of Stardust into a bunch of electric type Pokemon to take down whatever imaginary thing you're going to be fighting, we don't know what the next raid bosses are right now, uh, you might want to hold off on that because the future is coming. And we got two different flavors of Thunderist and a Zekrom to look out for. Then finally, the number one slot, actually occupied by two Pokemon, but they're basically the same Pokemon, Curium Black and Curium White, or Black Curium, White Curium. At any rate, these guys are insane. Base attack, 310. Madness. Max CP, 4,596, which is also Madness. So these guys are Dragon Ice-type Pokemon, and they're just all powerful. Like, I don't know what more you want me to say about this. Uh, so comparing them to Rayquaza, even if they were to get a Dragon Tail Dragon Claw moveset or a Dragon Breath Draco Meteor moveset, they would outpace Rayquaza in performance. And even if they get like a, a bad Dragon type moveset, like they got Dragon Tail Dragon Pulse, right? Well, okay, they'd be behind Rayquaza in DPS, but they'd still be higher in TDO, which suggests that in some situations they could be better than Rayquaza. So, Rayquaza, watch out, the future is coming. Now, if you're curious about this graph, Curium Black is only featured. Both of them are the same Pokemon, so I just wanted to save some space here. But this is like highly exclusive fusion Digimon stuff we got going on here. When are we going to get Curium Black and Curium White? I don't know. I'd expect it to be near the end of the generation, maybe sometime way later on, as some sort of EX raid boss or something like that. So... Don't worry too much just yet. I think your Equazas are safe, um, but Curium is a coming. Also featured on this graphic, we got Haxorus, which is a pure dragon type Pokemon with the Dragon Tail Outrage moveset, which is a decent alternative to Rayquaza, Salamence, Dragonite, etc. Should you happen upon one. Uh, given how exclusive they've made the, uh, the pseudo legendary Pokemon so far though, uh, Haxorus might have a have a rough time. You might have a rough time finding one. I don't even I don't even have a uh, Garchomp yet myself. So, um, but as an Ice type attacker, because Curium Black, Curium White, they are also Ice type Pokemon. Uh, do have the opportunity to outpace Mamoswine against Dragon Flying type Pokemon. The Pokemon Ice types are meant to attack without an Ice type fast move. Yeah, so Dragon Tail and Ice Beam is enough for Curium to outpace Mamoswine as an ice type attacker or in the role it's meant to fulfill as an ice type attacker, which is kind of interesting. Uh, just a taste of the power that Curium Black and Curium White are probably going to bring with them in Pokemon Go. Uh, personally, I could see them getting some sort of Iron Tails and Headbutt treatment just to keep a cap on their power because honestly, both are looking pretty insane. But uh, we'll see what the future holds, right? So that wraps it up. The top 10 rating Gen 5 Pokemon in Pokemon Go. Predictive analysis. We don't have any Game Master information yet. We don't know when Gen 5 is coming, but with this information, you can have a good working idea of what's going to be good in Gen 5. As far as rating goes, if it wasn't in this video, it's probably not going to be all that great, to be honest. As far as high-end rating goes, like there's certainly plenty of good Pokemon out there. For example, Samurott, which is the water starter type Pokemon with Hydro Cannon, is better than Kyogre. So why didn't he make this? Well, I mean, it's a community day move. So like, when are we going to get that? I don't know. But then when are we going to get anything in Gen 5? I guess I don't know. So, you know, don't, don't sue me here for not including Samurott. And uh, what? Zorark, another fan favorite. Two glass, not enough cannon to be a good dark type attacker. I'm sorry, guys. I love Zorark too. Not happening. Uh, and plenty of other Gen 5 Pokemon that are good, but not the greatest, right? Uh, Hydreigon, one such Pokemon as well. It's not bad. Certainly good. Not the greatest. If you enjoyed this content, you want to see more stuff like it, well, then make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. If you've got any questions on this content you want them answered, well, comment below. Let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out.
Really? Is that even in the shot? I hope it's not. Why are you doing this here? Do this somewhere else. Go. Go. No, I'm kicking you out. Donezo. Done. Bye-bye.